Hello fabulous first grade. I'm glad to be back with you today. Today for whole group reading we are going to talk about author's purpose. The author's purpose is why did they write this story? What was their purpose for writing? There are three main purposes why someone would write a text. They might write to entertain, to entertain you. They might write to inform you, give you information. Or they might write to persuade you. Persuade means to talk you into seeing things the way they see things, or talk you into something. So those would be your three main purposes for writing. We're going to do a quick practice. I want to show you something. You may say, why is that important? Why is it important for me to know why they're writing this story? Well, I'll show you right now. You as a reader, before when you pick a book up, before you start reading, your brain already knows some things about that book that you're going to be reading. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to share a book. I'm not going to say a whole lot. I'll, I'll point some things out, but I want you to use your brain to think of what does your brain already know before we start reading this book. And here comes the first one. I have a book here. Its title is, What is a Yurt? I have a picture of real people and real things in a real place. On this page, a really good title, Who Lives in a Yurt? I have real pictures of real people. On this page, I see more real pictures of real people and things. And I also see a caption in here that gives us more information about the picture, which helps us to understand better. I see those thinking wheels turning. So what did your brain tell you automatically when you just saw this book and saw the way it was put together? Yeah. This is an informational. So your brain's already getting ready to take in some information. And maybe if it's a topic you're interested in, maybe you've already got questions that you want to be answered from that information. So that helps us as a reader to predict what's coming and get ready for what kind of text you're going to be reading. All right, next one. What do you think? As I show you this book, what does your brain think automatically as soon as you see it? We have a fun title. What a feast. I see some animals eating off of plates. I see a squirrel and a chick. Looks like the squirrel lives in a house. He's got a striped sweater on, and the chick has on clothes. Hmm. On these pages, I see some pictures with more animals with clothes on, and I see a title that says, Bunny Has an Answer. Do bunnies have answers? What does your brain automatically tell you? when you look at this book. Is it going to be true information? Probably not. I think it's going to be a fun story that's going to entertain us. Wouldn't you agree? All right. Well, I did not have an example of a book written to persuade at my house. So what I did, I wrote one so excited. Now my book, it is a book, but it's written kind of like a letter. I'm trying to persuade my mom into letting me have a pet snake. She doesn't want one. So see if I did a good job of persuading her to let me have a pet snake. Are you ready for this? And don't make fun of my illustrations. <laughs> I want a pet snake by Jennifer. 
Dear Mom, I would really, really, really like to have a pet snake. And there's me holding a snake. Having a pet snake would be cool. It would be very easy to care for a snake because you don't have to walk them or change a litter box. Do you see how I'm giving her reasons why it would be easy? If you let me have a pet snake, I will feed it, clean its cage, and make sure it has food and water. I'm telling her everything I will do. Thanks in advance, Jennifer. You see how I put that in there? I'm already assuming that she's going to move over to my way of thinking. P.S. I promise to make my bed without being told to do it every day, too. <laughs> Just a little extra something to persuade her into letting me have a pet snake. You see how that was written? The form, when you're trying to persuade someone, you give reasons um, for them to change their mind. So those are your three main reasons why we would write a text. I'm going to let you do a little quick practice. I'm going to show a book. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. I may point out some things, but your brain's going to tell me. Do you think it was written to entertain? Do you think it was written to persuade? Or do you think it was written to give information? Are you ready? I bet you are. Look at your title. Look at your pictures. Read your title. Look at your pictures. Are there some captions in there? Same on this page. Pictures, real pictures with captions. Hmm. What's your brain already ready to do? To be entertained or to be persuaded or to gather information? I think you're right. That would be written to give us information. Good job. All right, one more. Get your brain ready. What is your brain ready to read about when I show you this book? See some fun, a fun cover there. See some exciting characters. Some more fun things on this page. And it actually looks like the characters are talking to each other. So what do you think? Do you think this is going to give us information? Or do you think this is going to entertain us, be a fun story? I think you're right. I think that one is written to entertain us. Very good job. The story we're going to read today to uh, fill out our graphic organizer that you're going to think as we read it. Why did the author, what was his purpose for writing this story? The title of our story is Meet Rosina. We can tell some things about Rosina just from the very first picture. She has spelled out her name in sign language. Meet Rosina is written by George and Kana. Hi, I'm Rosina. And if you'll see, they broke the text up to go with a sign language symbol for each word and each letter in her name. I am deaf, so I talk with my hands. If someone is deaf, that means they cannot hear. 
And they have to use some other form of communication other than talking like you and I do. So they use hand gestures and symbols with their hands. I go to a special school for deaf children. All of our teachers teach with American Sign Language. We call this signing. We study math, writing, reading, and art. It's the same as in other schools. Did you hear that? And I'm sure some of you can relate. We may not be deaf, or you may not be deaf, but you have lots of things in common with Rosina. We all go to school and we learn math, writing, and reading. We do art. Yeah. My brother, Emilio, also goes to my school. We play basketball during recess. I know some of you play basketball during recess. I've seen you. My mother and aunt are deaf too. They both work at my school. Mom is a teacher's helper. My Aunt Carla shows us pictures of students who used to go to the school. My mom was one of them. My aunt often tells stories about when my parents were young. Can you make a connection with that? Do you have some family members that like to tell stories about your mom and dad when they were little? Sometimes we go to the school library. Our librarian, Hetty, signs stories from books in the library. Hetty is good at telling stories. She makes us feel as if we're in the story. The story can make us feel sad, scared, worried, or happy. Is there somebody that's a good storyteller in your life? I love going to art class. I like to paint. Here I am painting a picture of myself. Do you like to paint? Our class made up a story. It is about a deaf father who woke up one day with four arms. We wrote it and did all the drawings. Then we made it into a book called too many hands. Have you ever made a book? I like sports. We are playing rugby. The way we play is to tag the person carrying the ball. Then he or she throws it to another player on the team. By running fast, we can get away and cross the goal line. Our team played other schools. We beat all the other teams and accepted a big trophy. We were so happy. We splashed our coach in water. Some of us got wet too. We are all friends, so no one got mad. Do you play a sport or work with a team to accomplish goals like Rosina? After school, I showered and changed clothes for dinner. Mom likes to fix my hair. She puts it up in a bun like her mother did. At home, we all help Mom cook meals. I chop lettuce. Emilio cuts up cheese. Dad makes guacamole. Yum. Do you cook together as a family sometimes? After dinner, Dad and I play a game of chess. Emilio roots for me. Mom, Dad, Emilio, and me. That's my family. But there are many more, too. We are a big family. I have lots of aunts, cousins, grandpas, and grandmas. Most of my mom's family is deaf. My whole family uses sign language to talk to each other. This is how we sign goodbye. What's your brain thinking? What do you think the author's purpose for this story was? Did 
Did it give us information about a certain topic? Or was it fun and entertaining? Hmm. When you click on the next video, we will work on the graphic organizer together. Oh, goodbye.